Meet John McPhee, the eccentric millionaire, international playboy, crypto enthusiast, public tax evader, ex-fugitive, and the man behind that annoying antivirus called McPhee. Some might call him the previous top G. The story has it all, from broke to millionaire, murder, battle against the government, and McAfee's very suspicious death. John McAfee found dead today in a prison cell in Spain. You might recall a very similar character talking about his own fate, potentially being similar to that of John McAfee. Even after claiming he would never kill himself, John McAfee was found suicided in a prison cell in Spain. Even after being harassed by US officials, allegedly getting subtle hints that they wanted him dead, John McAfee promised that if something were to happen to him, he would release 31 terabytes of incriminating data of US and other countries' elites. A couple years later, the data is nowhere to be found. The story might have been forgotten by the media, erased out of public consciousness, but we can't allow the past to be forgotten, because that's how we ensure that these same mistakes are repeated in the future. Here's the crazy story of John McAfee. John David McAfee was born on a US military base in England. His mom was British and his father American, who was working there at the time. After some time at the base, he ended up moving to Salem in Virginia, where he eventually was raised. His father was an abusive alcoholic who would beat him severely. McAfee reportedly lived in constant fear and wondered why this was happening to him. When he was 15, his father took his own life with a shotgun in the bathroom. During high school, McAfee was not the geek that you would expect would be sitting around all day with computers. Back then, he was already showing his interest in business, selling the thing he knew would always sell, cocaine. I used to sell drugs because if you take enough drugs, the only way you can support your habit is to sell to others, so, um, and, and for many years I did. In 1967, he graduated with a degree in mathematics from Roanoke College in Virginia. He tried to get a doctorate in mathematics at Northeast Louisiana State College, but got expelled because of his relationship with an undergraduate student, who actually became his first wife. During this time, he also developed his own drinking and drug habit. Reportedly, he used to take hard drugs in the morning before going to work, like LSD, for example. This turned into a severe addiction, and by 1983, he joined Alcoholics Anonymous. In 1986, when computers were starting to be used by the general public, two brothers in Pakistan launched the first ever computer virus. This virus was called Brain. When McAfee saw the news, he saw a huge opportunity he couldn't pass out on. In 1987, just a year after, he launched the first ever antivirus software. He called it VirusScan. He made it free for anyone to use. And within the first month of his launch, 4 million people were already using the software. Years later, many more millions of computers throughout the world were using McAfee software, and companies were paying over $5 million a year to license it. To show you how big McAfee was, in 1992, over half of the Fortune 500 companies were using McAfee in their staff computers. This made the company worth billions, and that's what made Don McAfee a multi-millionaire. But this wasn't all smooth, because in the coming years, he lost management of the company, and then he decided to sell all his shares for $100 million. Now he had more money than he knew what to do with. McAfee is now a multi-millionaire, so he decides to live life. Starts buying up mansions, cars, and even built his own resort in New Mexico. Then he became a spiritual yoga guru, reinventing himself and becoming a new man at his yoga retreat in Colorado. Essentially he was bored, and he didn't know what to do. What did you do with the money? I wasted it like everybody has money. During the years where he was free to do anything he wanted, McAfee said he kept getting hit with various lawsuits from people who wanted to take his money. That's why many years later, in 2009, he auctioned off many of his possessions. Later he claimed that he was just famousing the media to make it look like he was broke, so people would stop suing him. He got tired of living in America, especially with those annoying lawsuits, so he decided to move to Belize, a country in Central America for a more peaceful life. Unfortunately for McAfee, this is the part of the story where he becomes an international fugitive. He bought some houses in Belize and even built up his own laboratorium inside the jungle. The point of this laboratorium? Well, 
He was researching plant-based antibiotics, or so he claimed. He brought many girls to live with him at his resort in Belize, and he even bought his own private militia. McAfee claimed that the government of Belize was harassing him because he refused to pay bribes. The armed police raided his compound under the accusation that he was making drugs in his lab. No drugs were found, but his entire lab was destroyed. The media quickly started to pump out articles about this American millionaire surrounded by girls and private militia with a history of drugs and alcoholism being raided. Of course, none of this was ever proven, but the public swallowed it nonetheless. McAfee just returned to his house and brought with him a pack of wild dogs. But you see, this little inaccuracy is what would cost McAfee his life. McAfee didn't live alone in Belize, he had some neighbors. One of these neighbors was called Greg Fall. He was also just another American looking for a peaceful retirement in Central America. Unfortunately, McAfee's dogs were preventing this. One morning, he decided to get rid of the dogs. He came up with a master plan to throw poisoned meat into McAfee's garden, which then if the dogs ate, would die. The nine dogs ate it, and the nine dogs died. Literally the next day, Greg was murdered by a gunshot to the head. His house showed no signs of forced entry, so the authorities ruled out the possibility of it being a robbery. They approached the tech tycoon for questioning, however, he was nowhere to be found at the time. Soon, McAfee went on the run, claimed that the government of Belize was trying to frame him. McAfee thought that he would get tortured or even murdered for being a suspect in the case. That's why he left Belize. One of the caretakers of McAfee's compound claimed in an interview that he was given $5,000 that he needed to transfer to another person. This person potentially being the assassin which McAfee had paid. There is an the dogs were poisoned. The following morning, sometime around 9 o'clock, John called me, he said, take this money, $5,000, and go put it in this guy's account. But this claim was later discredited when McAfee shared a video exposing that this caretaker was actually in fact bribed by the media channels. John had nothing to do with that murder. Let me make this perfectly clear. I had nothing to do with the murder of Gregory Fall. Only three months later, he was arrested in Guatemala. This was in 2012. The whole arrest was caught on camera by Vice News. Here you can see how McAfee's life was literally like a movie. He faked a heart attack, got sent to the hospital, where he suddenly woke up to tell the nurses not to undress him before the press. On McAfee, who was wanted for questioning of a murder in Belize, he collapsed at the detention center where he was being held. He was rushed to the hospital. At first, they thought he might have suffered a heart attack. The press pursuing McAfee on this gurney right into the emergency room. And as medics transferred him to a bed and began addressing him, suddenly the man who appeared nearly dead spoke. Asking the nurses not to address him in front of the media. Ah, yes. And later on, in a different interview, he claimed that he totally faked his heart attack. Of course it was a ruse. Get real. Okay, what happened? Okay, because as soon as he got to police, the Prime Minister of Police called the President of Guatemala and said, we want his back here. Later, he returned to America. Back in America, he started to get his life in order again, sort of. He became a public speaker and the leading voice in cybersecurity. He also decided not to pay income tax anymore, as he thought that it was unjust. I have not paid taxes in 10 years. I will never, ever pay taxes again. Neither should you, neither should anybody in America. If I have to run forever, they will not ever get a penny from me. At the time, he didn't know this, but this decision is what would eventually lead McAfee to the grave. In 2016, he decided to run for president of the United States under the Libertarian Party. Of course, he didn't win. But in the following years, he continued to promote crypto as a way for people to stop paying income tax. He actually built up a large following, and he openly admitted that he hadn't paid income tax for over a year. Eventually, he ran for president again in 2020, but this time, things didn't go as smoothly. McAfee was under investigation by the IRS along with his wife and four campaign workers for suspected tax evasion. On January 22nd, McAfee fled the US until eventually he got arrested in Spain. That same month, a court in Tennessee charged him with tax evasion and demanded that he was extradited back to the US. McAfee claimed that if he was extradited, he would spend his life in prison so that the US could make an example out of him. It is certain that I will see.
spend the rest of my life in prison. Because the United States wants to use me as an example. Even though the normal sentence for tax evasion is only three to five years. And that leads us to the end of the story when John McAfee supposedly kills himself before being extradited back to the US. McAfee was an expert in cybersecurity. He owned the software which millions of companies throughout the world use. He could literally have so much info on government officials, CEOs, or even wealthy families, we don't know. But this payload, even after many years, is nowhere to be found. The story is also very similar to the story of Julian Assange. Another story which is very important and very relevant still today, which we'll cover in a different documentary. Now you also know why Andrew Tate says that he would never kill himself, because characters like him, John McAfee or Julian Assange, run this risk of pissing off too many governments. What this means is, if they can't shut you up by normal means, you end up dead. So what do you think? Did McAfee kill himself? Was he tired of being on the run? Knew he would spend the rest of his days in prison, so he decided to end it all there? Or was he actually killed by the US authorities in order to shut him up and prevent the paid load of incriminating data to be released? Let me know in the comments below. Subscribe so you don't miss out on our future documentaries and follow our Twitter if you want the most in-depth info.